Hello everyone, this is part one of session 18 of Pre-Socratics to Augustine, also called History of Philosophy 1. We are talking about Aristotle's Nicomachean Ethics and we now turn to book two. At the end of book one, Aristotle has reached a really important distinction, namely between two kinds of excellent activities in the human soul. One set of excellent activities, he thinks, one set of ways in which human beings can be excellent in a distinctively human way is by reasoning. And the other way in which we can be excellent in a distinctively human way is by habituating our desiderative and affective attitudes, what we love, what we desire, what we want, what we enjoy, what we find painful, in such a way that these kinds of things obey reason. And those attitudes where our affections and desires listen to or obey reason, that is how Aristotle explains the so-called virtues of character or excellences of character. Examples for these excellences are justice, courage, and moderation. The proposal, hence, is that you are a courageous person, for example, if you have habituated your fear responses to whatever happens in the world in such a way that they respond to correct reasoning about what is to be feared and what is not to be feared. So, for example, you're not going to be scared of a little mouse, but you would be adequately cautious if you encounter a tiger. And, for example, you would be moderate if you enjoy, let's say, exercising or eating things that are healthy, and you would not be moderate. If all you enjoy is, let's say, you know, lying on your sofa and having ice cream. So that would be not having succeeded at training your desires such that you want the things that you recognize you should want. And that is being a virtuous person in the sense of the excellences of character. With this proposal, Aristotle turns against two other options. One would be to say, well, virtue is something we are born with. And the most prominent version of that idea at the time is an idea that we already mentioned earlier in the semester as one that also Plato rejects, namely that one would simply be born into an aristocratic family and thereby be one of the best, the Aristoi. Both Plato and Aristotle reject this traditionalist sociological notion of excellence and put forward what we may call normative notions of excellence, ethical notions of, of excellence, where to be an excellent person is an achievement. It is something that we can all strive for. We are not either born this way or not. We can strive for it. Aristotle also rejects the idea that the excellences of character are somehow against our nature. So he says, you know, we are neither born with it or not, nor is it the case that it is against our nature to become virtuous. We can become virtuous, namely through habituation. And I want to give you one example of how we can think of habituation and also how pleasure and pain, which Aristotle thinks are important dimensions of habituation, operate in habituation. And it's important to see that habituation is not just habit. Sometimes people say, you know, Aristotle thinks that virtues of character are, that virtue is habit, that the virtues of character are just habit. That is not the proposal. There's an important difference between habits and habituation. We already saw that habituation involves enjoying what you do and doing what you correctly judge you should be doing. Now, we have a lot of habits, like, say, drinking too much coffee, where that is not the case. Maybe you feel bad about it while you do it. Maybe you know that you shouldn't do it. 
So that can still be a habit, but the kind of habituation that figures in Aristotle's theory of the excellences of character must meet these two criteria. You come to, it is a path towards enjoying what you think you should be doing and what you think you should be doing is actually what you really should be doing. It is a correct judgment. You make the correct judgment about what you should be doing. One example for that is say that you think, well, I'm not exercising enough. I should start a routine of running. Now, it may well be the case, and it is a recognizable phenomenon, that when one is starting that kind of thing, it is kind of painful. Like you have to get up early in the morning and you don't feel like it. You have to drag yourself to do it. But then Aerosol thinks that when you do something that you correctly judge you should be doing, there is a kind of pleasure involved, even if it is painful, namely the pleasure of praising yourself. You tell yourself, you know, I did the right thing. I did well. I actually went running today. And there's something nice about telling oneself that I did the right thing. And that pleasure, the proposal, is kind of carries you through the tough beginning of acquiring this new routine. And then the proposal is that as you go running routinely, you come to actually love it. You come to at least enjoy it. And that is the thought that when you are a moderate person and things like exercising long to being a moderate person for Aristotle, then you not just do the things that you think you should be doing, but you actually enjoy them. So your assignment for today is that you come up with an example of habituation where the difference between mere habit and habituation becomes clear.